Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we'll bring you the biggest entertainment story. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I'm here with Ewa Ritu, and we have a guest co-anchor in the house, William Moore. Hiya. So William Moore is a writer, a poet, and a spoken word artist. I mean, he's like a, a writer who writes about almost everything, basically, right? Pretty much. So he will be here to analyze the stories with us. Um, the first has to be Black Bones. I uh, don't know what his <laughs> aim is, but he did a video, or he put out a video on his Instagram page saying that, um, I think he categorized Bonner Boy, um, Whiskey, and um, David Do as grassroots <laughs> artists that are up and coming, and he wants to give them a platform mm. for them to blow. I think he just wants attention. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Be Black Bones, who is that first? <laughs> like, I need to ask that question. Who is he? And it's just, is the up and coming artist that needs help from these people. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, in Nigeria now, you have not just Nigeria and the world now, you have to do something crazy or say something really crazy to get people's attention. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that it might get to Bonner Boy, and you'll be like, who is that? and then jump on the song. I think he just wants them to be a part of that song, maybe have one of them on the song. He just wants attention, that's all. Well, I mean, like, like you said, now we live very much in the age of spectacle. So it's not, it's not enough that you have the content. You have to have a spectacle around, mm -hmm. around the content. I mean, you could really ask who is Black Bones, like compared to, you know, a whiskey or mm. a boy or a do. But it's, I find it interesting and quite hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually. hilarious. And it's sort of like, for me, I actually enjoy things like this in, in the culture. Because, you know, hip hop culture as well has a lot of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like dissing and, mm. you know, being braggadocious. So it, it's, I, I think it's hilarious. Personally. Yeah, you're talking about braggadocious. He's the same guy that went around with a megaphone at some point on the streets of Lagos mm -hmm. shouting he's the best rapper in Africa. So I think he's been doing a whole lot to push himself out there. I hope it works for it him. It will get there one day, trust yeah, Because me. I think Black Bones is a good rapper. The mm -hmm. fact that we are talking about it on TV is working. It's working. It's working. It's, you know, right. job done. Mm. Yeah. And to be honest, like you said, I think he has good music, actually. He's a good rapper, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. And I hope that he actually gets the attention he wants one day. Somebody don't just <coughs> should pick him up and do something. Yeah, he's already um, signed he to a record label. Yeah, um, not under MI, but he's done a project with MI, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've seen them both together on mm. different platforms, so... Yeah, he has, I think he's well known to the hip hop heads in Nigeria. So if you're not a hip hop head, you mm. probably won't know who Black Bones is. But he's, he's pretty much done. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> how, how, how better to get into the commercial space mm -hmm. than through Wizkid, David Doe, and Burner Boy? Mm -hmm. Possibly the three, maybe with exception of maybe Tiwa. I would say these are like the most commercial mm -hmm. Nigerian artists mm. that there is today. So I, I think, you know, he needs to raise his PR guy's fee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I hope this works for him, like we said. Mm. Moving on to the next story, um, Ruby Rose makes public um, the graphic footage of her emergency spine surgery. She explained that she had to undergo the procedure on, um, this happened a couple of months ago because it's either she does the surgery or she risks being paralyzed. So right. she just had to go under the knife. And um, the video is too graphic to show on TV. Mm. But I'm very glad that she's back on her feet. And I think she's going to be on a very popular... Is it Bats? Bats woman, Bats woman, something like that. Yeah. She's supposed to star. Star, yeah. She's supposed to be uh, the Bats woman, yeah. so she's about to get back on that now. Yeah. Hmm. I can I can see Bat woman in. In her. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see mm -hmm. that. I can see that. I mean, I don't, I don't know about images of your surgery mm -hmm. in in the public domain. You know, like I, one time I watched this video of like a CS. Um, yeah. And I almost fainted. Like, I was watching it thinking, <laughs> I am not going in this place if mm. I'm married. And no, just, mm -mm, I'm going to be outside. But if your wife wants you inside? I would be inside, but I'd be passed out inside. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be done with the baby, and then, then, then they'd have to wake, wake you up. <laughs> so I, I don't really know if, I don't know how I feel about sort of like exposing those kind of images mm. to, to the public. But then again, it still comes back to what I'm saying, how we are now so obsessed with just the spectacle of, Oh wow! Like I mean, think about how many people have surgeries every day. Mm. You know, but it's not necessarily like a selfie moment. But you know, like we are talking about. She it made now. a whole so, video. Yeah, she said she, she said she just wanted to see 
what, the process. Yeah, the process of going under the knife. And she, she wanted she, to see Yeah, them. she said, I mean, you, you, you watch Grey's Anatomy, mm. right? And you see what happened, so why can't you watch this one? And if people can go mm. on your page to mm -hmm. see how you're bullying, how you're having fun, they should be able to watch what you're going through, your pains too. Yeah. So probably they will just about good yeah. times. People need to start understanding right. that there's downsides, yeah. right? There's nothing wrong. You could decide, okay, you know what, I'm going to do like a I just woke up selfie. I'm going mm -hmm. to do a oh, yeah, whatever that is not so glamorous. But between what is glamorous, what is regular, mm -hmm. and then what is just gory and mm. just like for us to say, oh, that like, we can't show it on TV, mm. sort of tells you, like, okay, is this really? really content mm. that, well. you know? Okay, so you think it's a bit too much? I did, a tad, a tad. I mean, like, I really don't think it's too much. I mean, she's it's comfortable with it. Yeah, she was the one under the knife, mm -hmm. not me, not you. Uh, yeah, but we don't need to see it. Mm. You know, like uh, if I stepped out of this building now and I took my trousers off, and you know, I can. And uh, like he said, it's probably like she's going to be featured in a new movie. Mm -hmm. It'll be like it's like a, it's more like a publicity stunt for them. After this whole surgery thing, everybody wants to go into the cinema to and see, see how, how she's she going to perform bring the and, character. To yeah, life. right. Mm -hmm. Um. Well. Uh, <clears throat> Let's just say I hope her, her acting is good enough. Her acting not, I'm, is good. I'm she not, is a very good I'm actress. Just saying, I'm just, I mean, like, like I said, for, for, for Batwoman or even Catwoman, mm. I can see like she has the, the body. She mm. is ready. She has the face, the body, mm. the attitude. The attitude, So yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that. I mean, one. and it, it was doing so many stunts that landed her in the it's surgery in the first place. So she's, uh, I think uh, she's ready for this. How many times did Jack Chan break bones in? Oh, a whole huh. lot. A whole how lot. many times did you see him on TV That's showing up? Jackie oh, Chan. Oh, this is right. Ruby Rose. So, he's not so 21st century as much as right. We know he has this, this old mindset, and you probably not see him on social media doing so much. So this is our time. This is how we do things. Uh, how we do things is all right. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna remember this next time. I'll remember this next time I'm in the toilet. Okay. Right. Well, okay please don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're going to trend if you try that. Anyways, you will really uh -huh. trend. But don't do it. Well, um, I'm just saying if she can do it, so can I. Okay, <laughs> so for a very quick break, more return, we'll definitely have more stories to discuss. We'll be right back. What we do not understand, we will stigmatize. What you can see is the remaining of the tanker that exploded. The suffered equally confessed. A 500 naira they collect them. With no talk, they go beat you. Now two to other five and they pay. Welcome back. Um, moving on to the next story, Two Face joins the Stop Robbing Us campaign, and this campaign was launched by technology leaders um, to put an end to the common practice where Nigerian police stop young people with laptops and gadgets and unlawfully arrest them, attack them, kidnap them, even extort them. Right, and I think this was off the back of the story of. Um, a young guy who shared his story on Twitter, I think on Saturday, mm. where he was actually extorted, and he said he he they had to make him go to the Police um, bank to withdraw okay. money for them, right? And everything he was trying to say wasn't making sense. And this guy is a, a tech guy, right? Yeah. A software engineer or yeah. something. And um, I like that this campaign is going on now, and I like that I like the people that are spearheading mm. it. People like um, Joko. And I mean, the big leaders in the tech industry when it comes to Nigeria, and mm. they're trying to say that the government have to step in to do something about this. Because mm. you cannot just see anyone on the road with laptop these days and claim that, that they are Yahoo mm. boys. Mm. We know there are Yahoo boys. We know they are foresters. But I think our police and men or women need to um, educate themselves more, be more exposed. 
I and think. I, I, I think um, they need to start working smartly. Mm -hmm. Because now, if I'm a thief, mm -hmm. and I know that you're out there to catch me, I'm not going to go around with guns. The Yahoo boy, I don't think the Yahoo boys are walking around with their the laptops. laptops. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? It's people that are, they are clean, they are doing their normal job, and they need to understand that this is 21st century, and mm -hmm. people need laptops to do their jobs. Yeah. And, like, almost everybody wants a laptop, even if you don't have. You want one to do your job properly. I'll, I'll, Some even used to just edit their pictures. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's something. I, I, I would tell this for free. Mm. I do not believe there is a Nigerian young man mm. today that doesn't have a police story. Mm. Mm. Not one. Like, what am I saying? Just a month? A month, two months ago. I had a whole thing where, like, me and my friend, we ended up in a cell, and, you know, it turned into just long story. Long story short, literally like that guy's story, they had to, like, this guy drive me to the cash point to get out um, 20,000 naira for wow. them, 10 for my friend, 10 for um, myself. And these guys, these guys took us from um, Asapa, London, wow. all the way to Yaba. Wow. wow. Yeah. And what sort of... Coming out of it, I, I really got to understand that these law enforcement people, mm. what they've literally done is they've just gathered a bunch of would have been touts and criminals, wow. mm. giving them <laughs> uniforms. I'm mm. telling you, because mm -hmm. like you, 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 you hear the way they speak, and you can tell from the way they speak, these people clearly have no training. You know, mm. no, like, why did they even take us? They mm. told my friend to open his phone. And, you know, he had one of those moments of, claiming your rights and he mm. was sort of like, uh no. And because he said no, all of a sudden me too, I was like, uh no. <laughs> and before you knew it, these guys cocked their gun and throw us in the bus. Wow. Mm. You know, and it's it's a thing where I, I'm I'm not I hate to be that guy, but I sort of feel there's going to be this whole ranting and raving and mm. petitions and trending and all that. But fundamentally, I don't see anything changing. They're mm -hmm. not, you know, like th this, this is already the population they've hired to do this job. You know, people that are not educated. But what can change if we truly want change or if the government really want change? What would you say they should do or where would you say they should start from? Hmm. Well, um, honestly, I, I don't know. I do not know. Because and, and it's like, oh, I trust them. them. <laughs> no, but it is, it is so systemic, though, because mm. I went to Provost to, like, make a complaint and everything, and I actually tried to follow channels, mm. you know, but it's one of those things where even the process is so frustrating, mm. you know, and, and this is a thing where it's sort of like a gang situation, because these guys, the, the money doesn't just stop with them. They have higher People officers they, mm. that they remit to, you know, so how, how do you really... This this is a, a a a corruption scheme that feeds a whole. Who do you even report to? Who, who do you even rep the person you are reporting to is thinking, hmm, if I see, I'll give me my own thank you. <laughs> you know, so it's it's really it's it's one of those things where the only thing I can sort of imagine is maybe okay, raise their salary to a particular point where, like, if I knew they yeah, were paying, yeah, if I knew they were paying these guys okay. say to two hundred k each and they stopped me, I'll tell them, Baba, you what what do you have for me? Mm. You know, so that that is sort of the only thing I would imagine that might make most Nigerians feel like, okay, well, you people, you are still eating money, so why are you even? Because as it is now, I am very pessimistic. I am, unfortunately, I, I I don't see the change coming. Mm. <laughs> no, no, that's really deep. I'm trying to understand where it's coming from because, to be honest, we have, we've had like lots of cases, lots of hashtag, but still nothing. And is it really keeps changing. happening every, every day. day. Not one no, daily in numbers. Multiple. They, mm. like, there's people that have died on this thing, mm. and, you know. So what are we really talking about? You know, it's but we're not going to keep quiet. Yeah, we'll, so we'll keep and talking. To on, yeah. We're trying to stop robbing us campaign. I think yeah. the only way that it can be minimized which actually I need to speak to someone because I have a great technology idea, but mm -hmm. we need technology systems mm. put in place put in place that even prevent these things from happening. Mm. You know, so it's a thing where, okay, every, every, um, if they have systemic things like say, um, I don't, I, I can't even trust them to have the technology. We have to have it. And it's almost like you have to have like, like an app on your phone that say if I just, once I see police, I can just press a button and all my guys already know, okay, this is where I am, and I'm with police, and mm. it has maybe even message Twitter to say, 
um, um, uh, X Y Z place. Mm. So I think you are giving away very great. Yeah, well, 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 um, that's that's as much as I would say. That's yeah. as much as I would say. All right. Uh, moving on to the next story. Kanye West and IMAX are collaborating on the release of a new film, Jesus is King, um, to be released exclusively in IMAX theaters around the world on Friday, October 25. The film will include songs arranged by the West in the gospel tradition alongside music from his album of the same name. I think I'm looking forward to this one. Mm. I would like to see what he's putting together because probably Beyonce has started a trend for them. So everybody's trying to put together mm. some documentary and making money off that part of it, you know. So um if I would like to say Kanye West is deep and, and on another <laughs> level that we right. don't know. So I would love mm. to see what he's gonna do with this one. I mean, like let's let's first of all give Kanye his respect. Mm -hmm. let's, let's not <laughs> right. Let's, let's, not, let's not even like I I remember um what was this album? My beautiful dark to set fantasy. Mm -hmm. The album came with like this whole video that was like a film. Mm -hmm. That is what Beyonce later did for her. What was that album she had? Uh, the one about Jay Z. Lemon Lemonade. 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 Yeah. yeah. And um so even before then. Kanye was already on that. Setting. Yeah. Okay, but he no. didn't do the documentary though. No, no, no. Yeah, so. So now that he's doing this, it's like, okay, I'm looking, definitely looking forward to it. I, I think I've seen him live before and this guy brings it. Like, mm. I have never seen whole performance. It was just him on stage. No backup dancer present, no backup singers, nothing. Mm. But somehow, his energy he made is it work. He had like a whole setup, like an AI computer thing that he spoke to. Mm. It was it was just him by himself. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm really looking. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys were old enough. Wow. For when um, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> walks, <Okay. laughs> when Jesus walks was released, you know, uh -huh. back in the good old days, mm. you know, when, uh, when we used to make music. Jesus uh, walks. Wait me, wait me. Are you, are you, your melody. We are. We, we get to it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really looking forward to. It's Kanye. I've always known that Kanye is somebody that sees something that nobody sees. Mm. So I will, I know that this documentary would probably take us deeper and deeper into his life, mm -hmm. lifestyle, and what he probably thinks what before putting him. the old church thing together. I can't wait for it to come out anyways. Quick okay. Question, quick question. All right. If Kanye had a church, mm -hmm. would you be a member? What are you Why doing? not? He <laughs> kind of has a church, right? Yeah. Now. I, I, I think, I'm just saying, would you be, if he had branches, you know, like Redeem, mm. that's one of many branches. Yes. If I can't go to where the general overseer I'm, I'm not going, right? <laughs> oh, man, you guys. If I'm not saying Kanye, yeah, I'm, I'm not going. Not going. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have much time, but maybe we should quickly touch on this last story, which is on an actress who says she can't marry because she took blood oath with her lover when she was 18. She says it all started when um, she was that age and then she fell in love, deeply in love, according to her. And she was so carried away that um, her lover lured her into taking a blood oath with him at the time. So the story went on and on to say that she wanted to break it at some point and he refused and then he traveled out and, and came now back. she's still stuck or her relationships are not working. And he's married. Oh, he's married. He's yeah, married. So. Um, I didn't know we had run out of excuses. Mm -hmm. Because staying single. Mm -hmm. If I knew this blood oath excuse was available to me, you would have been <laughs> using this. You would have been using that. You know, so I, I mean, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. So the guy has married. Mm. Yeah. The blood oath did not catch him. Mm -hmm. they, they, that was why I got confused. Did really? he marry abroad? Because they no, say he came back. does not cross water. No, but, no. but sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some there's a level of patriarchy in this day. Juju, sometimes mm. they tell you to catch the woman, but it's not. No, I, I don't mm. think that applies when it comes I, to. I have no idea. Oath, like <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure you can tell male from female blood apart. Yeah, right. I'd like to believe I can. I don't know like what, but I think she should just woman. get out of this. And if the man can get married, she can do it too. Mm. Look for a man. Mm -hmm. Check yourself. Get into um, see a cancel or something. I'm not married by now. How you sure I did, how you sure I did not do an oath? Is that a husband is hard to find? Really? Yeah. I'm glad that you are agreeing because we have few husband materials uh -huh. out there, mm, and know. more they, comes. Well, you know, let's just say the economy is bad. <laughs> <laughs> the economy is bad. Okay, so start. let's blame it on the economy now. Mm, one of the many reasons. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so what else? Uh, you know, I think the economy is bad. I think. Um, the economy is bad. It's yeah, just yeah, economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The economy is bad. Or maybe men are just scared of commitment. Oh, well, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Heavily as well. Very much so as well. So mm -hmm. now, I mean, I mean, like, if you really, really think of it as a guy now, mm -hmm. if you have your money together, mm -hmm. you have no reason to marry to maybe 35. 
if you really if you really wanted to. Because mm -hmm. at 35, you could still marry like a 27, 28 year old. Mm -hmm. And it's, nobody's going to look at you like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. a bit weird. <laughs> Maybe I'll start looking for a 35 year old man. Oh, you've been looking for 20s that, and. No, I'm know, just that saying. Series, like... They have experience on their ceiling. <laughs> Those ones are now gathering experience. So we have to look mm. at experience now. We have to, mm. you know, start. But what, what would you say about young couples? Like, they're couples that found themselves yeah. at 21, 22. At 25, they're married. The guy's probably 25. The girl is 22. And they're living happily ever after. Mm. Like. Um, and they're building their life together. together. Building the future. Yeah. There are also people that become multimillionaires at 18. But you know mm. what they call them? Exceptions, mm. not rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit facetious, but... But um, it, it, it is quite hard to be mm. in a relationship in this era. I don't, I don't, mm. I don't think it is limited to women. Mm -hmm. mm. I think for men as well, it's mm -hmm. just as bad. The only thing is nobody hounds us, mm -hmm. so it doesn't look strange. So if, mm. Sorry, a 33-year-old single man and a 33-year-old single woman, you would tell the guy, ah, baba, okay, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. But for the woman, you would then ask. Your time you're too old, though. Yeah, so it's really, <laughs> the problem is actually the same on both sides, mm -hmm. I think. It's just, you know, one, There's thanks to patriarchy, mm -hmm. one person mm -hmm. gets more pressure. I'm bringing you back to this story. I think this lady is just saying so many things in the media to to get um, progress or to get attention mm -hmm. because I saw some now, interviews. <laughs> and, yeah, so um, actress. I because to be, our story does not even add up. He's <clears> married, you're not married. Yeah, yeah. so that. we have to wrap up. And um, that's how we end this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And like I always say, remember you can watch, um, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. And also you can watch Tea Time in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ewa Ritu, and of course, William Moore. Thank you for being here. And the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.